Welcome back, you guys, to another episode of WWX, that is Wrestling with Exotics. And in this episode, we're going to be covering the news of the wrestling spectrum. I am Think I Need a Fiji Water. That is Franchise Jerry. Let's kick the show off, man. What you got for us? For starters, I got the match between Finn Balor, Damian Priest versus Santos and Ray. This was a decent win for the Judgment Day. Damian Priest was able to take control of this match because Santos Escobar pinned somebody that was illegal in the ring. So that led to him getting pretty much snatched up, and then a South of Heaven chokeslam through the mat to end this match. What did you think about their matchup? Overall, bro, it was a good match. I feel like these are good showings because at this stage in their career, the Judgment Day and the LWO are going through, like, a little awkward time because Rhea only won the championship, and the rest of the Judgment Day is still trying to cling for that championship aspiration. LWO is at the same time trying to cling to Rey Mysterio's prestige so they can be swung in some type of title picture. I honestly feel Damian Priest needs to do more than just this, but it was a good match, though. But it was a classic way to end it, though, because at the same time, it doesn't fully discredit the LWO because it wasn't a clean, quote-unquote, victory. It was a distraction finish. Exactly. And I got to say, I like the team of Finn Balor and Damian Priest. I think they work well together, as well for Santos and Ray. I feel like those are some really good teams that WWE created, and I would love to see them eventually be brought up into the title picture. Definitely, man. Definitely. As far as my news bullets and goes, man, I just want to quickly bring up being the LWO. Rhea Ripley's going to be taking on Zelina. And I just don't – I think she's going to lose, but I think this is a great way to build her in that direction you wanted her to see from the first time you saw her with Santos. And um and Wild and Joaquin Wild and all of them. Yeah, bro, I feel like that's the new WWE formula. Somebody that's supposed to be a really good challenger has to lose to the champion that first time. And then yeah. the second time around, usually they get the belt. Unless you're like a Matt Riddle where... They can't trust you. Yeah, they can't rock with you like that. And they'll give you a bunch of belt opportunities, but they'll never let you actually win that belt. And I'm referencing to his match with Seth Rollins for the United States Championship. Absolutely, because Matt is a former United States champion. But in his current state, and because of how he's carried himself, you would never believe or think that. You think he's a joke and a goofball who paints his nails and just wants to subtly mention getting high as much as he can. And wear his 420 merch and be like, hey, I got to buy. I, I feel like as soon as he got brought up to the main roster, bro, they and they seen up. that uh, mushroom on his stomach, it was like, oh, yeah, you get high, huh, Matt? And they also kind of know a little bit of his UFC history. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, everybody loves getting high right now. You're going to be a, a, a great wrestler to connect to the audience. And it's like, no. If I was Matt, I would have never agreed to that shit. I would have been like, nah, man. I am with him. Exactly. I'm trying to do my own thing. I'm trying to create my own lane. Um, and I don't want to glorify getting high. I want to glorify being a champion. That's how Matt Riddle should have came at them. Like I was telling you off camera, bro, it's all about how you talk to these people in business because if you can't make it make sense, then they will use you any kind of way they want. Look at Mustafa Ali, for example. Not to get too far off topic, but that's somebody that obviously don't know how to negotiate his deals by himself or put himself in the right position to win anything. You know what I mean? He negotiates himself on TV. He negotiates himself into a surprise roll-up pin. He... He decided to let it. He negotiated himself into anything that is not successful winning. Like, he is somebody that you look at, okay, when you go negotiate a deal, don't do me like Mustafa. Don't, <laughs> right. don't do me like that. Keep me off TV because he would low-key Mustafa Ali should be grateful when yeah. he was off TV because now they put him on TV and embarrass you every chance they get because they're like, you complain about us, you talk shit about us on social media, and you say shit that just is off-putting, so we're going to put you in off-putting situations. Get beat up by Bobby. Get beat up by Brunson Reed. Anybody, uh, anybody else want to debut on a squash match? Right. Mustafa wants some. He wants some. P, he wants some. He wants a PT. The play <laughs> time. Show him. Like, you know. No cap, bro. And I feel like his best scenario is to be drafted back to NXT. His best scenario with him on two hundred five live, and they clip that shit. That's why I'm like, bro. Like, this is the next best thing. Go back to NXT. There's actually wrestlers your size on that show. Wesley. Exactly. And you can actually have some more legible matches over there on that roster versus what you've been doing over here on the main rosters. Oh, and just to jump back into my, my topic, 
I feel like uh, once again saying that don't feel she'll win, but this is a great step in the direction for the whole women's division because if Selena has come through, built momentum, and able to take on Rhea, what is stopping the rest of y'all to put your hands in your pockets backstage? Just, oh, I'm Rhea. I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Finally, one of us has won. How about you guys try to make some moments with Rhea and push yeah. the division farther? More closer to Rhea, I feel like the Judgment Day should have that type of mentality in general. Like, if I was in the Judgment Day and I just seen that Rhea got a title, Oh, I'm about to be thirsty for a belt because I'm not about to be the only one in this group without one. With y'all, <laughs> with y'all looking silly with your hands in your pockets or just picking fights of random people and not amounting to anything after that. Yeah, you beat up this name and that name, but what have you really won and what have you really held? And seeing Rhea win this world title should inspire the rest of them to go out and win some type of belt, whether that be the United States Intercontinental or Tag Team belts. I don't care if they got to go to NXT and win that belt. Win some belts because that's how you judge the success of a faction off the belts and what they were able to do with their time being a faction. Look at the Bullet Club, one of the best groups in fucking wrestling. And trust me, they didn't get that way by not winning titles. They won everything. They won everything. Okay. Look at DX. You don't get that way by winning titles. Everybody in that group, even all the extra members, have won that belt at some point. European, you name it. Everybody's been a champion at some point. You know what I mean? In Judgment Day, Rhea's the only one to win a belt in this group currently. She also has more world titles than everybody else in the group. Damien, Finn has one, and Dominic has none. Rhea has about four to five titles right now. So if I was them, I'd be trying to step it up. Most death, my man. I have one thing I want to focus in on, though. Hopefully, this match with uh, Rhea and Zelina is a quality barn burner because that way it would be so cool for us to just see Zelina in that in that light again. Kid, we only seen her in, in this manager light, yeah. not kind of seeing that competition mode. Right, and I look at Zelina as like a more highly competitive Alexa Bliss because you can see it in Zelina's eyes that. She really wants this shit, and she wants to be more than just a WWE superstar. That's why I really want to see her get the right push. Now, I understand that she will lose this match to Rhea Ripley because, obviously, you cannot shut a rain down that's just getting started like this. Yeah. But that's okay because I know, based off of her character and how she is in the ring, she will hold belts in WWE, multiple. She's already held one, and that was uh, the tag team belts. And she's already a, a queen of the ring. So sky's the limit for her. And I can't wait to see it. Definitely. Up next, we got Braun Strowman and Ricochet versus the Viking Raiders. Braun had me kind of cracking up in this match because he just botched the fuck out of him and Ricochet's new tag team move where he basically is supposed to throw Ricochet into the opponent. But he didn't even look back to see where the opponent was and just launched Ricochet to the middle of the ring mat. And Ricochet is writhing in pain, and Braun is just still doing wrestling moves to the Viking Raiders like he didn't just fuck Ricochet up. You know what I mean? I thought that shit was hilarious. <laughs> it was, that shit was really hilarious, but overall, it led to them getting the win over the Viking Raiders for the fifth time. There ain't nothing really exciting to tell y'all about this I don't know shit. Why, bro. But I will say. It's sickening to see how Ricochet is being held back because I know him from Lucha Underground, and on there, he was the man, okay? He was, he was winning world titles over there, and on top of that, he was leading that company to prominence. He put that company on the map for real. So I don't like the way that he's being utilized in WWE, and I feel like his ceiling is so much higher than what it is right now. And Braun Strowman should also kind of be ashamed of himself because we're looking at him like a hero instead of the monster among men now. And he did that so he could he gave popularity for Ricochet all because of Twitter. Yeah, if he wants any type of credibility in keeping that monster role, then he needs to drop this tag team with Ricochet. I don't want to see him and Ricochet turn on each other and that lead into a whole thing. I just want to see them, okay, we had our last match. Let's just be done and then move on into our own thing. We don't always need to see a tag team turning on each other to break it up because that just leads into a, a separate storyline with just them fighting against each other and never getting to a main belt or anything. I don't want to see that. I just want them to be done with each other and 
go be great. If I was Braun Strowman, I would go find the top dog right now and do him the worst. Roman Reigns, oh, you you the big dog. This is your house. You the tribal chief, head of the table. You took the title from me. I would put Roman Reigns through that goddamn table and tell him, nigga, I'm up next if I was Braun Strowman. Because, bro, you're the monster among men. You can't be taken as a joke, and you definitely can't go out like the Big Show. The Big Show was probably the world's greatest big man, but he went out sad because he just let WWE utilize him any kind of way. Because why? He can't negotiate his deals right or do business right. You know what I mean? As far as the Ricochet, Braun Strowman tag team, they need to split up because it's just weird. Braun Strowman, you're at the point you fucked yourself over by going to that create your own narrative co- a company with EC3 and K and Cross. And now that you, two of the thirds of you guys are back in the WWE, not doing shit and proving why you guys got released and why you're in sin as control your own narrative. So I feel as you are dying out and you just need to just give it up, bro. No one gives yeah. a fuck that you can lift weights or you're a bodybuilder and all that shit. As for Ricochet, he has a lot of potential still, but I feel like he's been overused because because this is this is here why I say that he hasn't been used in the right way, but he's been oversaturated and overexposed. We know he's a great seller. We know he's super athletic. There's nothing. The things that set him apart, they let him dry of it. They kept showing it while he still loses, so it doesn't matter anymore. That's why when he does get like the Intercontinental Championship reign, feels good. But it's not shit because he's when he loses the belt, it's easy to go back into this other shit. They had him losing so much beforehand that now if he does win, you're just waiting for him to lose. You're not even enjoying it. Like the Intercontinental Championship was the last. Yeah, that was the, that was the last. We was just waiting for it to end the whole time. And that's when how, I look that back was, on it. That, bro. Exactly. That's that was the last. That was the last championship reign that you had. Like okay, maybe, maybe after that. Now you know you're just trying to get him out the dirt, but you're just like you know. You're gonna if you if you if we do that, that's setting ourselves up to watch him get burnt out. Because if they did that to Kofi, I see him getting done even worse. And the thing of it is, look at how they set him up. They got part time like Logan Paul doing his kind of spots with him, showing him like, yeah, nigga, we can get this part time nigga to do what you do, but you gonna make him look extra good because you sell hella good. Mm-hmm. And that's not cool to him because he's being loyal to the business, but the business not being loyal to him. Yeah. I will say this, though, about Ricochet, and it's also why I love him so much as a wrestler, because he can always adapt and he always evolves. And seeing what I've seen in Lucha Underground, I can assure you, he hasn't shown nearly as much as what he did over there. He I hasn't. promise you. He's only shown a glimmish. I feel like he understands what they're doing, and he's all like, okay, I still got to do some big moves to still keep interest. But I can't show them my whole arsenal because long term, that could be bad for me. And at that point, it wouldn't allow him to do anything new. You know what I'm saying? So I like that. I like that he's able to not show his full arsenal, bro, because he knows that if he shows his full arsenal, he'll really be finished. And from experience watching him, I know that he has way more. And I feel like he's just waiting for the right opportunity to display it. And once they finally put that big belt on him, I promise you, he will show you why he was the man over there on Lucha Underground, bro. This man has done some shit in wrestling that I've never seen before and has blew my motherfucking cap sideways, okay? Like, that is no cap on this. I promise you. If WWE will trust him enough to give him that belt, he won't let y'all down. And anytime you guys have given him any other belt, He's put on. He's the reason why the North American Championship is so popular today. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. All those championships and the stuff he did, um, pretty much what I was trying to say, Triple H, because he, at the time, didn't have full control, and Vince did, Vince hold him, but then, but Triple H was like, all right, Rick, all right, you know you're my dog, and you held it down, so I'm still going to get you exposed to the TV. That's why he's on TV so much. Because Trips is backing him, like, all right, bro, stop, stop. Not, that I'm also a, shows what kind of worker Ricochet is. Like, yeah. all right, man, I'm a workhorse, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to earn my shit. Yeah. I'm going to earn it. And that's, I know, Ricochet is one of the people that generally loves to be on WWE. And he's somebody that can do talk shows, he can talk, and cool. He's charismatic. 
I feel yeah. though you guys got to give him the ball for them run with it. He's supposed to be someone that's like a goon there holding down the mid card title. He really should have the US title, not Austin Theory. He should be more accomplished than Finn Balor, in my opinion, because he's just way better than Finn Balor, has a way higher ceiling than Finn Balor. If you're going to take the risk on him, then why not take the risk with Ricochet? You know what I mean? Yeah, I just feel like he's like Finn Balor times two. He's doing everything that Finn Balor do times two yeah, and he, higher. But he don't have the complexion for the connection, man. That's why he's not getting the ball rolled on him. They don't like to roll the dice on that. Yeah, but it's so that's like, not safe to roll the dice on. You know what, bro? And I really need that to change because, as you can see, sports is evolving all around WWE. Okay, and as far as Look at the NBA and the NFL. They are making it a goal to start hiring more black coaches. Okay? Look at the NFL. They're making it a goal to go out and get more black starting quarterbacks because they're doing shit that Lamar Jackson is doing. You heard me. That's why I'm like, WWE, you got to go with the times. I'm not saying just give anybody a title because they black, but if they – have any glimpse of they can really run this shit then put the ball in their hand and see what happens that's how you know if you're a good leader or not when i played football bro sometimes i've had to play second string sometimes i'm starting i never liked having to play second string because the coaches don't teach you like they teach the first string they teach you to be a backup look when this go down you better no, if you're a real leader, you teach everybody to be a number one. You know what I mean? That's how you lead. You don't just, oh, well, I know I did a good job over here. So if this go out, I know I got a decent backup plan, but it ain't going to be as good as this number one. No, 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 no. That's how you have a good team. If you can trust everybody that come off your bench, you know what I mean? Sometimes WWE, you guys just need to take the chance. Look at what you did with King Booker. One of the greatest world champions of all time. Five-time world champion. You know what I mean? So, like, that's what happens when you take the chance on somebody. Knowing his background. Knowing his upbringing. Come on, man. Great. A truly inspirational King Booker. In other news, we got AEW coming up with their upcoming pay-per-view in London, England. That would be held at Wembley Stadium that can seat 90,000, but we're, ho we're hoping the gate will be somewhere between 45,000 and 60,000, which would be AEW's largest gate ever so far as recording. That's pretty dope. You know, if you ask me, yeah. it's a legendary soccer stadium, and it's not going to be in America, and the pay per is named All In. I just think I think it couldn't go any better than this. It has a lot of history tied into the company. I'm interested to see what happens. And speaking of which, what I'm interested in seeing, there's been talks that Goldberg is going to come to AEW to take on Wardlow in all in at Wembley Stadium. And I'm all for it. Who doesn't want to see a big old spear in the UK? You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie, bro. MJF had me crack it up on Twitter because he was all like, I would beat that big ugly Jew or something up. Like, <laughs> he said something like that to Bill. So I can't wait to see if Bill Goldberg actually go to AEW because he going to set it off in that bitch because Warlow going to get it first and then MJF is going to get cut in half. There ain't no way they can write MJF beating Goldberg, bro. No he way. Tear, just be God. He going to have to cheat. He gonna have to cheat. He gonna have to get disqualified. He gonna hold him. He gonna get. You he know, gonna have gonna to hit Bill with a it's ring. It's gonna be a legendary hold because you know I don't want to see Bill get put down after that terrible match he did with the Undertaker. The both of them almost killed each other. And, <laughs> and and you know it's crazy. Bill just lucky he's athletic for real, and his body ain't gave up on him like the rest of them. Because that's why he was extra yeah. dangerous in that match. Bill is in great he, shape because he had a con fucking concussion and he was throwing around the Undertaker like this nigga not three hundred pounds. And then he was dropping him on his neck. They said they almost died in there, bro. That's why I'm just like, you are a dangerous worker. I bet you, bro, I was watching like, see? See? <laughs> see? Like, there you go. That was it. But that yeah. real deal. Yeah, real pain. He said, that's real pain. That's yeah, real deal. That's that pain right there. That nigga said, Bill Gober in my career. <laughs> Hey man, he's a step worker. He's a step worker. Hey, Bill don't do nothing half-assed. That's all I'm gonna say. Yo, hey, 
That's that's the ultimate wrestling diss right there. He's an unsafe worker. <laughs> <laughs> and then look in the camera and say that shit. You're fine. Dude. Oh, You're finished. Yeah. They, you're not even in that documentary they're talking about. <laughs> you're outcasted. They already know you're a bad worker. Everyone doesn't need to hear from you. They're going to hear from everybody around you. Oh, yeah. He was, he was terrible. Drop me on my neck. Told my <laughs> family at home. He said, all right, I got you next time. But he does it again. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. We had Vince. Don't book me with him. You start to see him dip down the car. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yo. When when they start putting two to two together, because I be knowing, but then I heard him say that shit out loud. I'm like, man, that nigga really fell off. <laughs> like, he should have stopped dropping niggas on their neck. I just be like, man, I did, there ain't really no defending Bill in that aspect. But at the same time, everybody be complaining that this wrestling shit is fake, but not with Bill Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> he make it real for you. All right, so hey, oh. I ain't gonna be doing no complaining. <laughs> so Bill, got? fuck these niggas up. So we got Bill or Wardlow? Oh, bro, I'm going for Bill off the rip. Wardlow ain't never dealt with somebody as big as him. Pause. So this is gonna be a great match, and I know Bill Goldberg is gonna drop him on his fucking neck like he's known to do. He gonna do him the worst, this. Oh yeah. Oh. And he gonna cut him in half. Off the and review. All that shit that MJF was talking about on Twitter too. He gonna get seen about that too. The show. I would laugh if he really get the spread, yeah. Bro, MJF is gonna run faster than he ran from Daniel Bryan, and I promise you that. We'll get out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call it. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that boy definitely was trying to get out of harm's way. Yeah. Boy, he looked like he could have been on the uh, Jamaican track team. Shit show. My track star. (laughs) (laughs) What? that shit. So I read about why WWE doesn't like saying belts. Like, they're not supposed to say belts at all on television. And I, at first, I didn't like it. But then as I kind of read it again, I was like, it makes sense. They don't want you to discredit the championship by calling it a belt they want to keep the prestige of that title and that's just by calling it what it is like the ww championship the intercontinental championship don't call it a belt at the end just it's the championship and i can see how the word belt can pretty much diminish championship this is really a championship but it's meant to go on your weight i know like i like i get that but at the same time this should be looked at as a championship and nothing more. There's no don't don't look at the strap. It's not about the straps. It's not about the belt. It's about this, the actual title. So I like why they was like, okay, no, nah, don't say belt no more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's a business decision. But it also made me think back to how MJF keep calling that the Burberry belt. This is the Burberry belt, the new belt, blah blah. He say belt a lot. They be blocked it. So he was doing it as in like. It's like an underlying, we do alternative stuff. Exactly. But at the same time, when I hear MJF say it, I'm like, "Mm, yeah, he is kind of discrediting the belt's coolness in a way because it's it's more than a belt. It's a championship. It's the AEW championship. Mm -hmm. Call it the Burberry AEW championship, not the Burberry belt. Not the AEW Burberry belt. Call it, you know, the, the world championship this is the world championship you know what i mean so i, I kind of like that wwe did that at the same time it is a little extreme to be so strict on something like that but it makes sense mm-hmm. up next for y'all we got Liv morgan and raquel defending their belts against chelsea and sonia Liv got her payback on chelsea after she'd been throwing water in her face for the past couple weeks i wasn't feeling that i don't fuck with being spit on or having drinks thrown and on disrespect me. yeah that's the ultimate disrespect that's the okay let me just you that you just basically telling me you want your ass whooped right now immediately and i didn't like how raquel was holding her back if you really my friend you about to help me stomp this nigga's soul out his body because why the fuck did you just spit on me or throw a drink on me on national television and you thought this shit was gonna slide 
No, I ought to slap this bitch and you. <laughs> like, nah, bro. Nah, bro, because that's how I'm rocking. You're not doing that to nobody around here. But yeah, Raquel and Liv Morgan, they retained their belts in a nice, solid matchup between them. I thought it was actually going to be more of a squash match, but Sonya and Chelsea, they actually make a good team, which was surprising. I feel like WWE is doing a really good job with the women's tag team division right now because Liv Morgan and Raquel, they make sense. They go together. Sonya and Chelsea, they make sense. They go together. A lot of times, WWE puts these women together that don't really like each other or are not always trying to tag together, and that's who we have as the quote-unquote women's tag division. You know what I mean? But these two teams look like legit tag teams. I wouldn't mind seeing them have more matches against each other, nor would I mind seeing them build more together as tag team partners. Because Liv and Raquel, I think that's a solid tag team. How do you feel about how the women's tag team division is shaping up right now in WWE? I feel like it's definitely shaping up in a positive direction. Like you said previously, they're picking a lot of good pairings right now. Uh, Liv and Raquel offer a team that combines speed and power, and I'm looking forward to seeing them have like maybe rain into the summer because they're like a fun tag team. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing. Them and then they can have like a nice rivalry with Ronda right. and Shayna. I, I wouldn't like, mind seeing see, them take that throughout the whole summer. Yeah, that'd be cool. As far as everyone else, I don't really know how they fall fall in that line because there isn't a a lot of actual women tag teams. They kind of just mix it all up just for these belts. Yeah, exactly, bro. And that's why I want the WWE to focus in more on that and bring more tag teams that make sense like these ones. Okay, because when you pair people up like Becky Lynch and Lita, we're going to be sitting here looking at y'all like, why the hell did you do that? When it should have been Trish or it should have just been Trish and Lita versus you know, the, the other way around. Pairing. That was the most awkward pairing. And I hate that Becky Lynch had to go through that. It was cool that she got to go through that to an extent. Like she's in the ring with people that she looked up to. But as far as her being in these matches with these women, they were kind of embarrassing her in a way because they're kind of old. I hate to say it, but they're kind of old and they looking a little washed. Like yeah. Lita looked like she was buffering in the ring the whole time she was wrestling. So like... WWE, you guys got to make it make sense. Like, you guys do a really good job with the women's tag team division on NXT. I like the women's tag team division on NXT because it's legit. There's legible tag teams on there that have been together for a long time. Not just a little time or just because you guys got a pay-per-view or just a little event going on or a, a, a little beef. No, these women have actually been together from the jump, like the Hardys type shit. You know what I mean? So... That's what I like about that. So I, I think WWE definitely needs to incorporate that more on the main roster. Up next, we got Xavier Woods versus Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. And obviously, still Intercontinental Champion, Gunther. I ain't gonna lie. X, he put up a good fight, though. You know what I mean? It was just Gunther was too dominant in the end. This was a good match, but I didn't like the way it ended. Gunther ended up putting a sleeper hold on him that was barely even locked in. I knew the match was going to go something like this. I just hope that at some point they do take a chance with Xavier Woods and give him a title like that. He deserves a payoff of that type of stature. So hopefully he gets drafted to Raw and he tries his luck with Austin Theory because I wouldn't mind seeing him dethrone Austin Theory. You know what I mean? That's actually believable. And at the same time, you would be doing him his due diligence. What's your opinion on this match and Xavier Woods' performance? Honestly, Xavier Woods' performance was really cool. It's cool to see him in the in ring by himself, like I said previously, doing his own thing. And I, look, I think this is just a trinket of what's to come for him, possibly having his own singles run and winning his own championship. As far as Gunther, you know, a classic performance. He is the workhorse of this mid-card division, I would say, and that goes for the United States title as well. I don't look forward to Austin Theory matches. I look forward to Gunther's matches. Yeah. Now, I'm not a Gunther fan necessarily, but he, because of the wrestling he puts on, he's damn near made it to me. Like, why would I not look forward to him when he's in a card? You know what I'm saying? Right. So, as far as that goes, he's doing a phenomenal job. But other than that, made, everything made sense. He had to be Xavier. Some breaking news for y'all. I was reading on Twitter that they might have Big E come back and actually feud with 
Gunther, and then it was going to spark some between the New Day and Imperio. As far as Big E's return, I don't mind Big E dethroning Gunther, but at the same time, I don't need a feud between Imperium and the New Day. Yeah, I'm not interested in that because they're not – New Day is old. I don't want to see them shake ass and feud with nobody else. I'm right. I don't want to say I need them to see them to break up either, but I feel like they're at a different space in their career and they just need to just be chill. You guys are funny without doing all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And them feuding with people doesn't really work out. That's why they've only had one successful feud with the Usos because – no one else can match their silliness, but at that make at the same time make them take shit serious. Mm -hmm. So it's like hard for them to actually have these rivalries. You notice how every rivalry seems for because these niggas are out there throwing ass and throwing pancakes. So like, what's what what's the worry? What are you worried about? This should just be funny because they doing all of that against former world champions like Sheamus. That's what I'm <laughs> you know saying. what I mean? And it takes but... the Usos to make them serious. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why it's like, that's why they kind of like fuck themselves up. So yeah, they've marketed themselves how good and they can do a lot of stuff, hosting WrestleMania, fucking in video games, Gears of War, their whole fucking skin suit and shit like that. And going every award show, every video game, Xavier, he, he's there promoting WWE. I'm just like, yeah, you guys have you guys have made it. I don't want to take nothing away from you guys, but just realize the booking decisions, the, the how you decide, uh, how you display it. Yeah, is, you display it. Determine the longevity. Hey, longevity. That's why you guys have this longevity because you're marketable. So, in, like, the street profits are you, but are heterosexual is a for the heterosexual audience. You guys are for the questionable people. No, so that's exactly what that shit is. And like, I like, notice. They be uh, street prophets. They be searching, search, search, like, hey, yo, you don't ever hear anything new. They say nothing. Hey, yo. everything just flies off the tongue. It's cool. It's a party. Shake your hips. It's cool. I'm so happy, like, that the street prophets chose that name instead of something like way more ghetto, like crime time. Like what I just. <laughs> We're bringing the hood to you. <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> Look at that shit. It's racist. Vince loved that it. That shit is racist. Vince loved it. He Vince said, yeah. loved that shit. He loved the do rags. He loved the Tims. He loved the baggy blue jeans. Nigga, give me all of that. Y'all niggas look like 50 Cent. Russell, let's do this shit. <laughs> Beat that nigga up and kick him in his shit for real. He kicked that white nigga in his face when they was cutting that promo when they first joined. So crazy. What's his name? Shad? That nigga sh Doogie? Nigga, he said, no, nah, nigga, you in the wrong place today. Last yeah. little bit of news that we got for you guys. We got the match between Matt Riddle and Solo Sokoa. Matt had one of the best matches that he's had in WWE in a very long time. The match itself was highly competitive, and it was very physical. I mean, like, they was beating the hell out of each other, but it looked like Matt was mostly the aggressor, which led me to think that he was going to win this match. He put Solo Sokoa through two chairs, and then he buried him with the announce table. So I'm like, okay, Matt, you you treading in the right direction. But then he gets into this chain wrestling situation with Solo in the ring, and Solo catches him with a Samoan spike across the chest. <laughs> I'm just like, wow, all right, all right. I'm not feeling that. And why? Because it's 2023. Solo's out here winning matches with a Samoan spike that's not even hitting people in the throat. This, What are we doing here? And it sucks because we all know how good Matt Riddle is. The fact that he has to take a pin to a move that week at this point in our time is like, a slap in his face. Like, you're so weak, Solo can hit you in the chest with a thumb, and it's a wrap for you. Like, I would be pissed. I would literally be pissed. You thought that that's, that's, that's how I should be beat? Like, for, like, nah, man. Like, do you know who I am? Like, nah. I'm a UFC fighter. People used to ground and pound me. Pause. <laughs> I'm not tapping out to no fucking Simone Spike. <laughs> Do you feel me, though? Yeah. Do you feel me? Okay, just so that way I'm not crazy. I'm pausing that. Pause. That, that, come on, man. It's 2023. Y'all cannot be trying to do this with Solo. It's cool to have that as a, as a signature. <laughs> 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 Oh, 
<laughs> so it's like, why in the hell would I believe Matt Riddle tapping out to a fucking thumb to the chest? That's so goofy, and it's bad for his character. You know what I mean? Good win for Solo. I mean, he's got to keep some credit on that enforcer role. I mean, it looks bad if you lose to somebody with their nails painted, but they whooping your ass crazy. I, you know, it's just not going to look well for the enforcer. So I get why he lost. But at the same time, it's like, come on, y'all. Make it more believable. If I was WWE, I would make Solo come up with a new finisher that was dear and true to him. You know what I mean? The Rock didn't do nothing of what his daddy was doing. Rikishi ain't do nothing of what his family was doing. Umaga didn't do nobody's move. He ain't steal that spike from nobody. That's his shit. You come up with your own shit. The Usos, they do Team 3D shit, but at the same time, they also have another finisher that they can do that they made together, which is that uh, double Samoan splash. splash. Yeah. Solo, you need your own gig, bro. You need your own gig because that shit is whack, bro. It's 2023. What the fuck is going on? Or, and, and, and it might not even be Solo's fault. WWE creative. Y'all got to think about what time it is. That's damn near as bad as having somebody lose to a Hulk Hogan leg drop. We're going to be sitting here looking like, I know this fucking leg didn't really take you out like that, boy. Come on, man. What did you think about they match? Match was definitely hard hitting. It was very captivating. Matt did look like he was showing signs of potentially winning, but obviously I know Matt wasn't gonna win. It's often how WWE treats Matt because how Matt treats his body and treats himself. Matt is a habitual repeat offender, and right now he hasn't repeat offended yet. And I hope he doesn't. I said yet because we know his track record. He's willing to. Yeah, he Matt really is a sn- horny individual. He's really gonna sniff it all the way, get him off some coke. He's trying to get the red near his hole, trying to figure out if he can share with his girl. You know what I'm saying? So I just think Matt needs to focus on his actual in ring prowess and not having to be in the situation where he has to hold himself back, like you say. Because I often know the WWE formula. You know, you start out hot, you finish cold, and he's starting all his matches hot because he know he ain't, that's. All the offense he's gonna get in, that's all everything that's gonna make him look cool. He's gonna feel good. Yeah. Matt, what's how the match gonna end? One, two, three. Ding, ding, ding. Who's the winner? Not Matt Riddle. Because Matt Riddle, we can't trust you. Show us we can trust you. Show us yeah. you can control yourself. But- yeah, he's gonna have to take some more degrading L's to build back up that credibility in himself. And not only that, but the trustability. Because I can definitely see that. And if I signed Matt Riddle, to my wrestling promotion, I would put hella shit in his contract. Like, okay, bro, if you do any type of drug outside of weed and you embarrass me on social media again, cut. Like, I'm putting certain shit in his contract so that way he can't screw me over long term because he's definitely out to screw the WWE if they fire him any type of way. He's talking about leaking some information about them or something like that a be able to, what, save your job? No. Bro, it's up and it's stuck when you try to take WWE to court. Don't think that you about to be seen or get your job back, He'll buddy. Get extorted. He'll Hell get yeah. Extorted. And they will take you for everything you got, man. So you better chill out. Yeah, like I said, man, this overall was a great match, but I just didn't like how it ended. And I really need Solo to get a finisher of his own. You've been preaching that from the get-go. Personally... Spike is cool. I just feel like he has to deliver it to the actual throat. Like, why not let the spike be a setup to your real finisher? Okay, knock him down, and then, you know, do the charge up where you make him get up on his feet slowly, and then hit him with a crazy-ass power bomb or some crazy see, shit. I can see him doing a crazy-ass senton. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, uh, the spinning rock bottom that he'd be doing every once in a spinning while. Spinning solo. I love that shit. That shit looks crazy. It like you know what I mean, like, and it catches momentum quickly. Like it starts off slow, but as he get closer to the mat, you just gaining more momentum. Like it's it's, it's insane. Who knows, man? The best yet to come with Solo. I feel like he's going to definitely a diamond in the rough. They're slowly nurturing him into where he's supposed to be. Can't rush it. Yeah, I feel like his ceiling is higher than Umaga's, but at the same time, if he keep trying to be Umaga, that's where his ceiling will be. I think SmackDown was actually all right this week. I like the main event. I just didn't like how it ended once again. 
I feel like Matt Riddle is very underestimated. And it's because he's been playing this role of a dumbass for so long. So at the same time, he can't get no real credibility. Like, you know, you're, you're supposed to be dumb. Like, so it makes sense for you to take pins. So like I said, he's going to have to earn his respect back and trustability back by wrestling in some legible matches. Like, all his matches got to be like this. You know what I mean? Even if he does lose, all his matches got to hit like this. What did you think about SmackDown as an overall this week and AEW? Overall, SmackDown was cool. I didn't really, get, I didn't really care for it too much like that. I feel like a lot of filler. Like you're just waiting for WrestleMania yeah. backlash for real. I'm waiting for backlash and the draft. This is all yeah. filler to that. So yeah, I'm waiting for the draft for real. I don't really care about backlash either. Cause then that Roman's not even on it. So that kind of shows you too. Like they kind of like with him, that kind of gears you to like, hey, have good expect for it to good be a good pay per view, but nothing's really going down because he's not on it. Well, it makes sense, though, because they're trying to get him past that 1,000 days so that yeah. way they can take that belt yeah. away from him. Yeah, no hurdles. No hurdles. My, you know, we the ones. No hurdles. 1,000 days coming, bro. Night of Champions, 2023. It's going down. He going to lose it? He going to win it. He going to win Night of Champions? He going to hold it till Night of Champions? What's up? I still think WrestleMania Backlash is overall going to be a good pay-per-view. I'm pretty excited for it. I can't wait to see that triple threat match between Austin Theory, Bobby Lashley, and Bronson Reed. I feel like the title may just switch hands. I really don't see how Austin Theory is going to get his way out of this one. I feel like Bronson Reed is going to win the title. WWE book it. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see that, man. As far as AEW goes, it was a solid, I want to say 6.5 out of 10. I had great wrestling. I'm seeing more little leadings towards the ending of the collision between the elite and the BCC. I really hope to see that this match could be somehow and maybe blood and guts. This feud needs some type of stipulation or match where it's just like it can get extreme but controlled but not controlled. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that way I'm looking forward to that. MJF was definitely on the show once again being the highlight, shitting on the other four pillars. He and Sammy Guevara have paired again to, to Ho, Jungle Boy, and Darby Allen. So right now he's spinning. He's spinning Sammy. Sammy thinks he got a friend in our MJF. MJF really just paid him off so that way he can get Sammy to have be the one he takes on one on one, and then get in his mind and fuck him over. But you see how Sammy is able to even be able to do something like this, and that's kind of what I was trying to debate to you, like. Sammy is a very well-established wrestler in AEW, and he's won more than Jungle Boy and Darby Allin. So it just makes sense to why he would be next up and why he should be next up for MJF's title. You know what I mean? So I'm happy that it is working out like that because, honestly, Jungle Boy, Darby, y'all don't deserve it as much as Sammy. Sammy has proved that he can really – Take a title and make it prestigious. So he deserves this position more than you guys, in my opinion. I can I can uh, see where he's coming from with that. I can pick up what he's putting down. Who are you picking out of those three to face MJF if you had a choice? Who would be the best talent is going to get the most out of MJF? Um, either, honestly. Because you're not about to do Sammy Guevara any kind of way. I'd say Sammy because they haven't had a class I've watched yet. him drink his blood. I watched him drink his no. blood, somebody else's blood, and his girlfriend's blood. That nigga is crazy. Out of the three of them, I definitely see either Darby or Sammy. But I say Sammy because he, he hasn't had a classic with Sammy yet. But at the same time, Darby and him have great-ass matches. Even though MJF has went up a couple of weight classes since the last time they've competed, hey, I definitely don't think Darby can hang with MJF, bro. He just, if he could, he would. Mm. Like, that's why one thing I took away, and even before it, he had that moment where all of them in the ring, I told him, I said it. I said, y'all are mad at him, and y'all don't understand. Every time you speak on that microphone, you're mm. highlighting why he's better than you. You're highlighting why he's the champion, and he was the last one that got to the company. So it's not even like he had a head start on none of y'all. Y'all yeah. was getting faces, shaking hand, greeting elbows before him. Yeah. This, he just know he's smart and he's he's driven. That's one thing I I fuck with MJF. I don't. I don't fucking know that satanic shit he be doing or none of that. But I don't know it's not necessarily Satanism. He's just saying stupid shit about the devil. And he's not actually quoting scripture. He's not having seances. Being a normal person, he's just saying he's the devil. 
as if he's evil, okay? Which is wrong still. I'm not going to support that. But overall, him as a wrestler, him as just being a funny, normal human being or outside of that, he is hilarious. He knows what he's doing. He's able to make you feel some type of way about him. Either even if it's not a positive thing, he's like, oh, when you see him come on the TV, oh, you recognize him. You know who that is. That's a devil motherfucker. Turn the TV off. Oh, get the, oh he's back. Oh, it is something for him to stand out. So at this point, as him in the old-fashioned heel that he is, he's making that point. And every time I see him around them, I'm like, yeah, y'all, y'all need to stop kind of have these segments with him. Y'all low-key shitting on yourselves, and y'all don't... Y'all just hyped like we in the world title. He's like, he's like, yeah, bring him. They're not ready, so it's, no cap, bro. He's just making it that way. I just don't see him pairing up well against Darby Allen. I feel like he'll really dominate Darby, and then I don't see him pairing up well with Jungle Boy because I feel like he's just more experienced as a wrestler than him. So he's definitely gonna outshine him. Jungle Boy's gonna have his moments, but in the end, he's gonna fall because he's not experienced enough. Sammy is like the only credible competitor out of the three that I can look at and be like, that's okay, real competitive. I'm yeah, guessing. it's not going to be a light fade for MJF. And this is going to be something to where we see a maybe a best of seven series because that's how talented Sammy Guevara is. You know what I mean? And especially with MJF, they'll be able to have a, a real good legible back and forth. Yeah, overall, though, the show was a six out of five. A 6.5 out of 10, like I said. A lot of cool, slight moments, consistent wrestling, but didn't really do too much. Didn't really move any needles, you know? Right. And that's going to wrap up our news report. We appreciate everybody out there for smoking with us and watching the show. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, man. Share this shit with the world, yo. And turn on your post notifications so you know every time we drop a track. Also, make sure you guys go check out our new website, pcfshop.myshopify.com. Peace.